Hey everybody, Caleb with Almond Landscape here. I want to show you a really crazy um, insect infestation on a property here we're going to hopefully do a total renovation at, which is going to be really cool. I was walking up to this uh, cherry tree, uh, weeping cherry here, and I felt, felt the leaf and it was sticky and we're having a conversation with the client about what we're going to do and all that kind of stuff. And, and something didn't feel right, it was sticky. And I'm like, something's not right to that. So I came back to it and I got to looking and look at all you see all these little bumps on there? Look at all those little bumps. It's crazy, all those little scales. So what that is, it's called an armored scale. And it's a type of, uh, it's essentially a, uh, I'm gonna find a good one to sacrifice here. But it's essentially a, um, like a little snail, if you will. And there are tons of vampires and they're all over this thing. I mean, they're all over this thing. And then there's a white scale on this too. Like, look at that. See those white scales? And so they're on here sucking all the juices out of the plant like like a tick. But here, look at this guy. We'll squeeze his guts out there. Blech. That's yucky. So we're doing a consult in this. So we point that out to the client. They want to get this treated by a professional. Or if they do it themselves, be sure to read and follow the label instructions on like a type 7 product order. Horticultural oils actually work really well on this. But that, uh, but I mean, just look all over this thing. Look at all that. That's the craziest thing. So we want to be sure that we're watching, you know, and treating that appropriately. Then going around, we're noticing other things. We're going to hopefully do a whole landscape renovation here. This, uh, uh, oh shoot, prairie fire crab apple. Same thing, got that armored scale all in it. Um, so then we notice on this, this mugo pine, I noticed these branches here doing that, which kind of look like, uh, uh, pine saw fly, in my opinion. It's a little early for it, so i was kind of like well must not be it but then i found you know all over it i mean freaking everywhere again it's another one of those white white scale uh i can't think of what those are called but um you can see the little white marks on there but again what those do is they get on there like little vampires little leeches and then they chew up they chew up a place to suck all the you know juices out of the plant and it's like a bloodletting right so Imagine just having like a thousand ticks all over you, like slowly pulling all the blood out of you. So that's not good. Japanese maple, same thing. Um, not sure what, you know, age, obviously it's a little older, but we noticed a couple things here. We've got water issues, you know, from settling of the soils. We want to get these build up and shape, you know, and shedding away from the home, always, always getting our soils shedding away from the building. So we're going to take out all the stuff, redo all this. Uh, a friend of mine does power washing. We recommend them to power wash the house, get it looking like brand new. This mortar masonry work here um, is really falling apart bad. There's a rodent in there, so we might recommend uh, treating uh, for that rodent. And then and then busting off all this loose masonry work and then patching over that with a concrete repair mortar. And do that strictly as a time, as a time and material thing, because once you start chipping into this and this thing goes and goes and goes, like God only knows how bad that block is how long it's bad for and it may require like a really intense structural repair so you want to make sure you're doing those kind of things not at a flat bid but you know with a range of like this thing might be a thousand bucks to fix it might be you know twenty five hundred dollars to fix just always be sure that you're uh you know giving yourself plenty of room on those downspouts busted we want to make sure they're working so we'll stick a drain hose in, or a garden hose in those and make sure they're flowing out the streets proper or we're going to propose you know running new drain lines and stuff like that and get a whole renovation uh you know going around here um got a really nice service berry tree or amelanchy i love service berry trees uh that fruit is actually edible you can actually eat those berries um this is a shame this magnolia here is really cool but it's not it doesn't have the quite quite right stage for it to shine a lot of powdery mildew there are uh, sooty um sooty mildew there what on earth is that thing do i even want to know do i even want to know oh my god another kind of scale on this freaking place holy cow so oh my gosh so that sooty mold you see there is indicative again of a scale or a bug in there that's pulling the juices out of the tree and then passing it through in that honeydew, which is a sweet, sticky, all the sugars of the tree and everything. And then that, that mold essentially grows on there. And this is another type of, of scale of some kind on here. Look at that. That thing must, I don't know if that's eggs or, oh my gosh, that's so gnarly. And then there's a bunch more up here. Look at all those crazy things. So it's really important that you, I believe as a landscape professional, you, understand how to how to identify all this stuff so that you bring more value to a client when you're on their property you become their go-to guy that knows theoretically hopefully like 
a lot about you know your world right you bring a lot of value to them we're going to hopefully replace that deck and pet with a new patio and then we're going to take a lot of that soil and put it in here and get this build up so we can get rid of a lot of that soil on here and get this build up so we got positive grade again just like here always getting positive grade we're documenting we're taking a picture of this busted foundation block there so that before any heavy equipment gets here so we don't take the blame for that we say nope it was like that before we got here that's always advisable something when we do a deck like this that's been mounted to the house we're also going to have in our contract you know that, to mention that that siding is probably going to be stained and um need replaced or need something different done with it because it's going to be it's been shaded it's 20 years its whole life and it's going to look either like really new siding or you know shiny as opposed to this stuff has been beat by the weather for you know forever so you always want to have that in your contract and especially too when you when you pull uh those boards those deck boards up off from uh, below a door and those door jams and stuff are probably going to be rotted and you want to make sure you communicate to a client there's probably going to be a change order there it's going to be significant and uh you want to make sure that you're just always conveying this information ahead of time so it reduces the amount of surprises on a project so you don't have a uh too shocked of a client with uh you know crazy sticker shock at the end of a project for um all the change orders needed to make things the way they should be so with that thanks for checking it out like and subscribe all that stuff um and then check out kid contractor podcast www.thehardscapeacademy.com and where we teach a lot more about hardscape and hardscape training things like that have a good one folks yeah so if you want to talk stock options trading pap is your guy you've been, you've been doing that for a little bit for a few years now right yeah i have been doing this probably pretty heavy for five years or so yeah and i'm starting to dabble into just trying to understand all the nomenclature of calls and puts and shorts and iron, iron condors and all this crap that i don't understand um you know i buy some crypto here and there just straight stock and then just single stock uh, and some etfs and things like that in our own retirement accounts but all mark's trying to get me into the the options trading thing which is really cool i, I love the idea of it i've just got to learn a lot more about it and i i don't have the time to commit to it to really watch it so i don't know that's that's something i'll probably slowly slowly get into but it's going to be a very slow process for me to understand all that stuff it's really